I'm Dave Cross. In my column this time around in Shutter Magazine, I talk about the importance of keyboard shortcuts in Photoshop to save us time. Now, I know a lot of people are going to read that and think, yeah, I, I just don't use keyboard shortcuts or I can't learn keyboard shortcuts. That's a very common response that I get when I tell people how much I recommend using the keyboard to speed up your work. So here's the thing, we are creatures of habit. We do things the way we always have. So if you have a habit of going to a menu and pulling it down and using a command, well, you'll keep doing that. So as we talk about learning keyboard shortcuts, the reality is you just have to accept it's actually gonna slow you down at first to use keyboard shortcuts. You think about it for a second. If you want go to a menu and you look, okay, image size, and then you read the keyboard shortcut, then you let go, then you press the keyboard shortcut. So initially, it will actually slow you down a bit, and that's just something you have to be prepared for. But the good news is, every time you do that, you'll start to learn more shortcuts and speed up your work. Now, you may want to start, as the article talks about, just with the tool shortcuts. Every tool in Photoshop has a single letter you can press to activate the tool. So rather than going and clicking on it, you just press a single letter. Many of them are very logical, like M for marquee, and C for crop, and T for type, and L for lasso. Others are a bit more of a stretch, like V for move, or I for eyedropper, uh, W for magic wand. Here's a kind of a tricky one. The quick selection tool is W. Why? Because it shares the same slot as the magic wand. It just takes some time. If you're not sure, hover over the tool, and you'll be able to see what that letter is. But again, over time, you will learn them. And sometimes you'll remember something that will help you. So here's a story I've told a thousand times at, at various seminars and talks. It's one of my favorite stories of something that happened years ago. I was teaching a seminar in Atlanta, and I was talking about how on earth do we remember all these keyboard shortcuts, especially when some of them don't really make sense. And I was talking about tool shortcuts and how you press M for marquee and L for lasso. And then I said, now there are some tools that are just really odd, like J for the healing brush. How on earth do you remember that? And I swear, without missing a beat, someone in the back of the room shouted out, just think, Jesus, I'm healed. And I was like, sold. So now, of course, I always remember it's J for the healing brush, and hopefully you will too. But what I really want to stress is the fact that don't be surprised and be prepared for the fact that initially it will take you more time to learn how to use keyboard shortcuts. But the more you do it, the more it will become second nature, and it really can speed up time. Now, I don't want you to think, some of you are probably thinking, yeah, I don't know, uh, keyboard shortcuts, will they really save me time? They really will. And personally, I use a ton of keyboard shortcuts. It's just the way I like to work. What's odd is, sometimes if you ask me, what's the keyboard shortcut for something, my first reaction is, where's a keyboard? Because if I had a keyboard and could press the keys, I'd remember, because I might not remember, but my fingers do. And that's the other part of this is muscle memory will kick in and you'll start doing keyboard shortcuts without actually thinking about it. Now, I want to show you a practical example just to kind of really emphasize how important it is. So I'm going to show you right now an example of how the difference between how long it would take to do something manually using menus and, and your mouse versus doing the same thing with keyboard shortcuts. Let's take a look. So here's a simple operation. First, let me show you the completely manual, non-keyboard shortcut kind of way. So I'm going to use my mouse and the menus. So I have two layers here. I want to move her over. So I'm going to click on my Move tool, drag her over to around here. And then I want to free transform. But I can't see the handles here. So I need to get my Zoom tool and zoom out a little bit and then go back to free transform. There we go, now I can see the handles and we're just gonna make her a little bit bigger and then position her maybe here. Now we'll zoom back in again. And I wanna add a layer mask, so I come to the layers panel, click on the add layer mask button and I wanna paint on the mask so I go to my brush tool. Now I always look at the colors, they're the wrong way around so I have to swap the colors by pressing this little button. My brush looks like it's a little small so I'll go here and decide on a size, okay, and then start painting with black to hide this part of the layer to reveal. And as I do that, I think I need to move her over further. So back to my move tool, move her over here, and then back to the brush tool and keep painting. If at a certain point I go too far, I have to come back and swap the colors and paint back in with white. So that's the completely manual menu way of doing things. Let's undo enough times to get right back to square one. So here's how I would do the same thing using keyboard shortcuts. 
V is the move tool. So I press V and I drag her over. I want a free transform, Command or Control T, but I can't see the handles, so then I press Command or Control Zero to zoom out a little bit so I can see the handles. And now we'll make her a little bit bigger and press Enter and position accordingly. Then Command or Control Zero will fit on screen. Now in the article I talked briefly about editing keyboard shortcuts. I covered that in a previous column. I have changed the keyboard shortcut so I can press Command Shift L or Control Shift L to add a layer mask automatically. Then I press B for the brush. I look at my foreground color. It's not correct. So if I press X, that swaps to black. I start to paint and I realize my brush is too small. I press the right bracket key to make it bigger. Do some painting and then when I want to do more detail work, I press the left bracket key to get smaller. And I realize I need to move her over, so V for the move tool. Move her over and then B for brush to keep painting. And as before, if I go too far, I have to swap the colors. I just press X and I can swap the colors. Now, I didn't do this in the manual part, but if I wanted to change the opacity of my brush, I'd have to come up here and change it. I could also just press the opacity like 5 for 50 and so on. Zero goes back to 100. So this is just one quick example just to kind of make the point that even in a simple operation, keyboard shortcuts can really speed things up. If you imagine multiply this times every time you're doing something in Photoshop and realize that you could be saving a, shaving off a few seconds here and there, that's why I recommend keyboard shortcuts. Now, as I said before, change is difficult. It's often painful to change the way you're doing things, but I really suggest that Keyboard shortcuts is a simple fix. It takes a bit of effort, but once you start learning and remembering keyboard shortcuts, you really will save a ton of time. I'm Dave Cross. We'll see you next time.